Hey everyone, welcome back to the Investing Iguana, where we talk about all things money and finance. I'm your host, Iggy, and today we have a very interesting topic for you, how to beat inflation in Singapore. Inflation is the general increase in the prices of goods and services over time. It means that your money loses its purchasing power as time goes by. For example, if you bought a cup of coffee for $2 in 2020, you might have to pay $2.10 for the same cup in 2023. That's because of inflation. Inflation is measured by the Consumer Price Index, CPI, which tracks the changes in the prices of a basket of goods and services that are commonly purchased by the resident households in Singapore. The inflation rate in Singapore was 5.5% year-on-year in March 2023, down from 6.3% in the previous month. This was slightly below market expectations of 5.6%. The main factors behind the inflation rate were food prices, which rose by 7.7%, and the MAS core inflation, which excludes the costs of accommodation and private road transport, and was 5%. So what does this mean for you? Well, it means that if you want to maintain your standard of living, you need to make sure that your income and savings grow faster than inflation. Otherwise, you will be able to afford less and less things with your money over time. This is especially important for retirees who rely on their savings and investments to fund their retirement lifestyle. If their income does not keep up with inflation, they will face a lower quality of life and may even run out of money. So how do retirees beat inflation in Singapore? Well, there is no one-size-fits-all answer to this question as different retirees have different needs, preferences, and risk appetites. However, we can learn from some real-life examples of how some retirees have managed to cope with inflation and maintain their lifestyle amid rising costs. In this video, we will share with you three stories of retirees who have shared their strategies and tips on how they beat inflation in Singapore. We will also give you our own commentary and analysis on their methods and suggest some ways that you can apply them to your own situation. Before we dive into the stories, please remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Also, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and we will try our best to answer them. Alright, let's get started with the first story. Story number 1, Mr. Tan, 65 years old. Mr. Tan retired at the age of 60 after working as an engineer for 35 years. He has a monthly income of $4,000 from his CPF life payouts and dividends from his stock portfolio. He also has a fully paid HDB flat that he lives in with his wife. Mr. Tan's strategy to beat inflation is to invest in dividend-paying stocks that have a track record of increasing their payouts over time. He believes that dividends are a reliable source of passive income that can help him cope with rising expenses. He also diversifies his portfolio across different sectors and markets to reduce his risk exposure. Mr. Tan's stock portfolio consists of blue-chip companies such as DBS, Singtel, OCBC, UOB, ST Engineering, Capitaland, and Keppel Corporation. He also invests in REITs such as Ascendas REIT, Maple Tree Logistics Trust, and Capitaland Integrated Commercial Trust. He also holds some foreign stocks such as Apple, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, and Johnson & Johnson. Mr. Tan follows a buy-and-hold strategy and does not trade frequently. He reinvests his dividends whenever possible to compound his returns. He also monitors his portfolio regularly and adjusts his holdings according to market conditions and company performance. Mr. Tan's dividend income has grown steadily over the years, from $2,000 per month in 2018 to $3,000 per month in 2023. This means that his dividend yield has increased from 4% to 6% over this period. His dividend income covers about 75% of his monthly expenses, which are around $4,000 per month. Mr. Tan's expenses include food, utilities, transport, insurance premiums, medical bills, and entertainment. He also sets aside some money for travel, charity, and gifts for his children and grandchildren. He tries to live within his means and avoid unnecessary spending. Mr. Tan is happy with his retirement lifestyle and feels confident that he can sustain it for the next 20 years or more. He enjoys spending time with his family and friends, pursuing his hobbies and traveling occasionally. He also volunteers at a local community center and mentors young engineers. 
Our commentary, we think that Mr. Tan has a sound strategy to beat inflation by investing in dividend-paying stocks that can grow their payouts over time. Dividends are a form of passive income that can supplement his CPF life payouts and help him cover his expenses. By diversifying his portfolio across different sectors and markets, he also reduces his risk exposure and enhances his returns. However, we also think that Mr. Tan could improve his strategy by adding some bonds and gold to his portfolio. Bonds can provide him with some stability and income during market downturns, while gold can act as a hedge against inflation and currency depreciation. He could also consider investing in some growth stocks that have the potential to appreciate in value over time, such as Tesla, Amazon, Netflix, and Shopify. We also think that Mr. Tan should review his insurance coverage and make sure that he has adequate protection against health risks and medical costs. He should also have an emergency fund that can cover at least six months of his expenses in case of any unforeseen circumstances. Overall, we think that Mr. Tan is doing well in beating inflation and maintaining his lifestyle, but he could do even better by tweaking his portfolio and planning ahead for any contingencies. Story number two, Mrs. Lee, 62 years old. Mrs. Lee retired at the age of 55 after working as a teacher for 30 years. She has a monthly income of $3,500 from her CPF life payouts, annuity payouts, and interest income from her bank deposits. She also has a fully paid HDB flat that she lives in with her husband. Mrs. Lee's strategy to beat inflation is to save as much as possible and spend as little as possible. She believes that saving is the best way to preserve her wealth and prepare for the future. She also avoids taking any risks with her money and prefers to keep it in safe and liquid assets such as bank deposits and annuities. Mrs. Lee's bank deposits consist of fixed deposits, savings accounts, and current accounts. She shops around for the best interest rates and takes advantage of any promotions or incentives offered by the banks. She also maintains a minimum balance in each account to avoid any fees or charges. Mrs. Lee's annuities are from NTUC Income and Great Eastern. She bought them when she was still working and paid the premiums using her CPF savings. She chose the annuities that provide her with guaranteed monthly payouts for life, regardless of market conditions or interest rates. Mrs. Lee's interest income has remained stable over the years at around $1,000 per month. This means that her interest rate has averaged around 2% over this period. Her interest income covers about 30% of her monthly expenses, which are around $3,300 per month. Mrs. Lee's expenses include food, utilities, transport, insurance premiums, medical bills, and entertainment. She also sets aside some money for travel, charity, and gifts for her children and grandchildren. She tries to save as much as possible and avoid unnecessary spending. Mrs. Lee is satisfied with her retirement lifestyle and feels secure that she has enough money to last her for the rest of her life. She enjoys spending time with her family and friends, pursuing her hobbies and traveling occasionally. She also volunteers at a local school and tutors students. Our commentary, we think that Mrs. Lee has a conservative strategy to beat inflation by saving as much as possible and spending as little as possible. Saving is a good habit that can help her accumulate wealth and prepare for the future. By keeping her money in safe and liquid assets such as bank deposits and annuities, she also avoids any losses or volatility in the market. However, we also think that Mrs. Lee could improve her strategy by investing some of her money in higher return assets such as stocks, bonds, or ETFs. Investing can help her grow her money faster than inflation and generate more income for her retirement. By diversifying her portfolio across different asset classes, she can also reduce her risk exposure and enhance her returns. We also think that Mrs. Lee should review her insurance coverage and make sure that she has adequate protection against health risks and medical costs. She should also have an emergency fund that can cover at least six months of her expenses in case of any unforeseen circumstances. Overall, we think that Mrs. Lee is doing okay in beating inflation and maintaining her lifestyle, but she could do better by investing some of her money and planning ahead for any contingencies. Story number three, Mr. Lim, 60 years old. Mr. Lim retired at the age of 58 after working as a manager for 25 years. He has a monthly income of $5,000 from his CPF life payouts, rental income from his private property, and part-time work as a consultant. 
He also has a fully paid HDB flat that he lives in with his wife. Mr. Lim's strategy to beat inflation is to leverage on his assets and skills to generate multiple streams of income. He believes that income is the best way to cope with rising expenses and achieve financial freedom. He also seeks to maximize his returns and minimize his costs by optimizing his asset allocation and tax planning. Mr. Lim's rental income comes from his private property that he bought in 2015 for $1.5 million. He rents it out for $4,000 per month, which gives him a rental yield of 3.2%. He also pays a monthly mortgage of $2,000, which he deducts from his taxable income. He plans to sell his property in 2025 when the market is favorable and use the proceeds to buy another property or invest in other assets. Mr. Lim's part-time work as a consultant comes from his network and reputation that he built over his career. He charges $100 per hour for his services, which he provides to various clients in different industries. He works about 10 hours per week, which gives him an extra income of $4,000 per month. He also enjoys the flexibility and variety of his work, which keeps him mentally stimulated and socially connected. Mr. Lim's CPF life payouts are based on the Enhanced Retirement Sum, ERS, that he topped up using his CPF savings and cash. He chose the Standard Plan, which provides him with a monthly payout of $2,000 for life, regardless of market conditions or interest rates. He also receives an additional $1,000 per month from the Silver Support Scheme, which is a government scheme that provides cash supplements to low-income elderly Singaporeans. Mr. Lim's total income is $10,000 per month, which is twice his monthly expenses of $5,000 per month. His expenses include food, utilities, transport, insurance premiums, medical bills, and entertainment. He also sets aside some money for travel, charity, and gifts for his children and grandchildren. He tries to spend wisely and invest prudently. Mr. Lim is very happy with his retirement lifestyle and feels proud that he has achieved financial freedom. He enjoys spending time with his family and friends, pursuing his hobbies and traveling frequently. He also volunteers at a local charity and mentors young entrepreneurs. Our commentary, we think that Mr. Lim has an excellent strategy to beat inflation by leveraging on his assets and skills to generate multiple streams of income. Income is the best way to cope with rising expenses and achieve financial freedom. By optimizing his asset allocation and tax planning, he also maximizes his returns and minimizes his costs. However, we also think that Mr. Lim could improve his strategy by diversifying his income sources and reducing his reliance on his rental income and part-time work. His rental income is subject to market fluctuations and vacancy risks, while his part-time work is dependent on his health and availability of clients. He could consider investing some of his income in dividend-paying stocks, bonds, or ETFs that can provide him with passive income and capital appreciation. We also think that Mr. Lim should review his insurance coverage and make sure that he has adequate protection against health risks and medical costs. He should also have an emergency fund that can cover at least six months of his expenses in case of any unforeseen circumstances. Overall, we think that Mr. Lim is doing great in beating inflation and maintaining his lifestyle, but he could do even better by diversifying his income sources and planning ahead for any contingencies. So there you have it. Three stories of retirees who have shared their strategies and tips on how they beat inflation in Singapore. We hope that you have learned something from their experiences and gained some insights on how you can apply them to your own situation. Of course, these are not the only ways to beat inflation in Singapore. There are many other methods and options that you can explore and experiment with depending on your needs, preferences, and risk appetite. The key takeaway is that you need to be proactive and intentional about your retirement planning and inflation-proofing your income and savings. You need to have a clear goal, a realistic budget, a diversified portfolio, and a flexible mindset. Remember, inflation is inevitable but not insurmountable. You can beat it if you plan ahead, act smartly, and stay positive. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching The Investing Iguana. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and leave a comment below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our future videos. We will see you again in our next video. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay wealthy. This is Iggy signing off. 
Bye-bye.